All right. Hey, thanks for joining us today on our Seattle's Best Podcast, monthly podcast with your host, Brennan Klaus, team leader. And what was it a little dance? What is that? Yeah, yeah, this is a little dance. Yeah. To get excited. Uh, team leader of the Emerald Group at Real Broker. I'm going to start off. I, I thought Emerald Group was like a uh, tip of the hat to the Wizard of Oz. Thank you for clarifying that it's actually, uh, that's what Seattle's known for is the Emerald City. It's very true. Yes. It could be a tip of the hat though to the Wizard of Oz, but Seattle is known as the Emerald City. Here's a little fun fact for you. It's been its official nickname since 1982. And I believe it's because all of the greenery, but let me tell you what Google says, because the city has surrounding areas filled with greenery year round, even though it's very wintry. So it's Emerald City, but the Emerald Stone is also a like precious stone. And so it's a play on that as well. One of the gemstones. That Seattle's precious or you're precious? No, that our team is precious. That we're, ah. that we say our team is a cut above, like the cut of a stone. And you are. So today I want to talk about the, the market, like what's going on in Seattle. I want everyone that's, that's watching or listening to, to have an understanding of Let's brace ourselves for what the market will be, because looking back the last six months, it's been interesting, you know, a shortage of inventory, higher interest rates. And now we're, we're coming into a, a different market again. And this market, I think is going to be a little bit busier than what we had the last six months, maybe not what we had in, in, you know, 2020, 21, but that's what you're here for as the expert. So absolutely. Um, What's going on right now in Seattle? What's the Yeah, so what's going on? So essentially since the very start of the year, like right after January 1, we started to see buyers get active in their searching. So essentially January 2, we started getting calls. We work with Zillow specifically. We started getting buyers through Zillow. We started seeing some of our previous clients who were waiting to buy come back and get into the market. So it has been very active over the past 30 days. I think it's funny because a lot of times when I talk to clients, they don't believe that the beginning of the year actually becomes the most active time of year, but it truly does. People think about their New Year's resolutions. They think about the tax incentives of buying. They think about their goals for the year and potentially getting children into schools that they want to be in by next year. And so the spring market in Seattle really starts end of January, early February, and that's exactly mm -hmm. what we're seeing. So <laughs> to give you a couple of numbers, in King County last fall, what we were seeing was only about 300 to 400 listings go on the market per week. Just this week, we saw 306 new listings, so about the same amount, but we saw 601 homes go under contract. Wow. That's in all of King County. So we have about double the number of homes that are listed going into contract. And so that means that there's a lot of competition. So we've had buyers out. I would actually divide the market into two different categories. There is a category where buyers are going out and purchasing homes that have been sitting on the market probably since December, November, and they're getting credits from the seller. So they're reducing the price or getting a kick credit on the back end of the sale. And we see those credits anywhere in the one to 3% range of what they're getting off the listed price. We just had a home go under contract yesterday in the $700,000 range, and they're getting $25,000 from the seller. The other camp that's happening right now is the ultra competitive market of new homes that have just been listed. So in mm. Seattle, we see a lot of homes that go on the market Wednesday or Thursday, and then they get offers by Monday or Tuesday. And there's typically anywhere from five to seven offers. So I so, myself have- the, So those homes, my guess is the one to 2% off the list price, you're not seeing that at all. It's probably the opposite. On the new homes, correct. So anything that's newly listed this year, we are not seeing any price reductions or credits. So I've personally made three offers for clients this year so far. And of those three have only won one of them. One of the three we actually got under contract. It was listed at 1.2 million. It went per, for 1.34 million. Mm -hmm. 
So about 140,000 over, all contingencies waived. And the other two had seven offers on one, four offers on another, also going over $100,000 over the wow. listed price. And those are in the one to 1.5 million range newly listed this year. Now, do you think that's because like the improvement of, like, of the interest rates coming down a whole percent? Or do you think that's back to your, 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 the spring market starts in January? Yeah, I think it's both. So I think it's more demand from buyers that we're seeing pick up with fewer homes on the market. So, or the same number of homes on the market. So very few, for example, all three of these are really the only home of its kind in the neighborhood that they're in listed that week. And then I think the reason we are seeing some of the buyer demand is because of that interest rate coming down. So people who have waited through the fall are now back and ready to jump right in. Yeah. So buyers, buyers that are watching, if that's too competitive for them and they don't have this fortitude to pay above list price and, and or be in a financial position where they can offer, you know, eight to 10 percent above the list price, wh where is that tipping scale in days on market? Like if it's not the first weekend, is it homes that are on the market 30 days or longer or 60 days or longer? How are they getting like what's that group segment of homes where they can actually get one or two? 5% below this price. Yeah. So I think if you see a home listed for probably two weeks, they're still mm -hmm. going to want somewhere around the list price. And then once we get past that 14 day mark on the market, I think that's when you can start to negotiate. Obviously you can negotiate more if it's been on the market 30 days versus 15 days. So as you get into that 30 day range, yes, certainly you're looking at one, two, 3% off the list price, unless they've made a price adjustment before that. Gotcha. What's the spring market going to look like when the weather's a little bit better, inventory might come on and rates are sub 6%. Yeah. So if the rates get down to 6%, I think we'll see more of the same activity that's going on for newly listed homes. So you'll see a different set of homes every single week that hits the market and those will all almost be gone by the following week. So this is very typical for Seattle over the past three years, starting in, well, actually more than that, probably starting back in 2018, we've seen this weekly cycle of new homes hit the market, they're all typically gone the next week. So buyers do need to be aware going into this market. And I think as the interest rate continues to go down, they need to be aware that you have to start searching below your max budget. You have to search with an escalation in mind that you can get to. And that's super important. It's a big part of the strategy that we educate buyers about before we even start looking at homes. And a conversation I would want to have with them before they're actually actively going out looking at homes so that I can give them that, uh, hey, if it goes up 10%, this is what it's going to be. Good news is, you know, you can afford it. That's income wise. But, you know, that way I think they have the comfort of knowing like, okay, I can compete. Uh, this is how much money I need. Cause obviously going up that much, you know, they're going to need more money in closings because of property taxes. They're going to need more money for the down payment a little bit. So I'm, I'm curious of, of the, uh, of all the transactions your team did last year, or maybe include this, this first month of this year, what's been the like average you think of down payment? Oh, that's a good question. Average down payment. I think it's in between 10 to 20%. I think it's probably right around like a bit above 10%. We mm -hmm. have some clients who are able to be ultra competitive and are over 20%. But then we have a lot of people who are just starting. It's their first home and they're putting down 10%. They are making sure that they're getting in as an investment, but don't have that 20% yet to put down. We've even had this year starting at the beginning, people uh, who are only putting down like 5%. So there are ways to compete still with a lower down payment. And so you don't have to have that uh, big, massive 25%, 30% down payment. You can still compete with a uh, smaller down payment. Well, yeah. And a lot of that is the relationships you have with the, the other side, like being in, being in the business for a long time, doing a lot of transactions. Obviously, you know, 
like a lot of listing agents. So you're calling and they're like, oh, okay, I've done deals with you in the past. I know you're easy to work with and, and you bring like, you know, good offers buttoned up. You're constantly closing. Things aren't falling out of escrow. So that, that truly your, your reputation to them obviously matters greatly. I think the other thing for, for me, for getting people into those homes to be more competitive, the, you know, applying ahead of time and letting me submit your, your, your loan application, your pay stubs, your assets and credit report to our lender ahead of time. And instead of having a, a pre-approval or automated underwriting system, like do you, do you approval? getting a senior underwriter to actually look at it and condition it before you're even getting their contract accepted is huge because obviously at a pre-approval level level i can tell them what their interest rate would be today and the payment but the underwriting underwriter actually looking at their loan file and saying yes you're approved these are the conditions that you'd have to satisfy to move forward now good luck and go find your house when you're talking to a listing agent I imagine that's going to go way, way further than just someone that has a, a pre-approval letter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The listing agents in our market really want to know that we have done our due diligence up front, that we've worked with the lending partner before, and that they can close on time. Those are the biggest things that they look for. I think that the trend of having having lenders call the listing agent in our market has subsided a little bit, but I think some listing agents, it still, still makes a big difference for them. So it kind of depends on the listing agent's preference, but just knowing that the agent, like if I'm representing you as the buyer, that I've worked with that lender before, that they are reliable, that they'll close on time, and then for the buyer, I think it's making sure that your lender has that correct appraisal team around them that can go get that appraisal, especially if homes are getting bid up above the list price. It's mm-hmm. super important that the appraiser is knowledgeable, mm-hmm. educated about the market, understands what's going on as well. Yeah. So your answer gave me the perfect segue. Thank you for asking this next question. That. Emerald Group is going to be a one-stop shop here very soon. Tell me your reputation, your great reputation with all your your Google reviews. You can send me that Starbucks card later. Is only going to get that much further. Like like obviously on the purchase contract, they know who you are and that that, that holds a lot of weight. But now as a lender, so tell me tell me how is you being a, a lender very soon? If you're already watching this, it's probably already happened. How is that going to benefit your clients, that communication, or how's, how's that going to help with your, what you were just saying about, you know, the, the confidence of, of the lender? Yeah, absolutely. So right now, a lot of clients, when they start, they have to go to two different outlets and probably more if they're shopping lenders to find the right match uh, for their real estate needs, which is us, and then for their lending needs. So By combining those two, it's going to be easier on the client. And that's our biggest hope is to make this process more seamless, smooth, and really like our mission is to deliver unparalleled customer experiences on our team. And so this is just adding to that mission of how do we make sure that you have that amazing experience And then on the lending side, for me specifically, being able to speak with realtors and use the knowledge that I have in the market already to reassure the realtor that I understand the market, that we know how quickly Seattle moves in terms of closings. You know, there are many 10, 14 day closings that are financed and Mm -hmm. letting them know that we understand that. We understand Mm -hmm. that the appraiser has to get out there. We understand that the comps are here or what we're going to have to do to show them the value of the purchase price. And so that's just going to be a reinforcement, I think. And my hope is that my reputation amongst real estate agents will carry over into that accreditation for lending as well, right? So they say, Brennan knows what he's doing in real estate. He can write a really good and clean contract. He knows how to communicate. That is not to be missed in the lending side as well. Yeah, no, huge, makes sense. When you, when you say the 10 to 14 days, people are probably thinking, what, that's a cash, like how can you close in, in that short of time? I, you know, the lender I talked to at the bank said I needed 30 or 45 days and I just want to stay. Yesterday, internal meeting we had at Women & Mortgage, they shared last year's stats. They did that over like 900 plus loans 
and all of them, we're talking, you know, bank statement loans, you're self-employed to your really easy W-2, 20%, like all the average contract to close was only 18 days. And we, if you're W-2, especially, and if you do the verified, you know, underwritten pre-approval, we can do 14 day closes like that. Like, and, and that again, will help you when you're trying to go up against other offers is like, hey, we're, we're already underwritten. We can close in 14 days and we'll give you a two week rent back. Like your clients are going to win way more than someone that's like writing a half ass offer and has a lender that, you know, can't be reached on the weekends. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a big sticking point also for the buyer to know. So if you're listening to this before purchasing, know that that day you get into contract is crucial with your lender. So having all of that upfront work done will allow you to have that quick close. And sometimes other lenders push back and you know they want a longer close. But if you have given them as the buyer everything they need up front, if you've done your homework and once a contract is signed, you're just ready to move forward, you're going to be in a much better position to have a lot less stress mm. and just move towards closing because you already have everything that the lender needs. And that's the biggest time commitment that's needed between getting in contract and closing. Good point. Good point. People listening, they want to work, they want to work with you or the agents on your team. How do they get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. So you can always go to emeraldgroupre.com. But if you want to sh follow us on social, it's Emerald Group RE on Instagram. You obviously, hopefully, are watching this on YouTube or listening to it. So you can follow us there as well, Brennan.Klaus. And of course, we are on all social media channels like Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Bren the Broker. So a lot of people think my name is Brent, but it's really Bren V Broker just the first four letters of my first name. Awesome. Hey, thanks for sharing that insight. Perfect timing for what's coming on the market for people that are getting ready to buy this first quarter, first half of the year. If you've enjoyed this content, make sure you get on like and subscribe and stay tuned for next month where we dive into what's, what's going to be happening. Thanks Can't wait. Watching.